So, I was raised in Clearwater Beach, Florida. Wonderful place to be raised, terrible place to live as an adult trying to get around anywhere, especially in the summer. It's kind of like Myrtle Beach in the summertime. So, uh, I can't tell this story hardly ever without tears, but I'll tell you this. When I was a little over one year old, my brother was born. And my mom's water broke, she went to the hospital, and the nurses told her, oh, honey, you're not having this baby. Go home, and when it's time, come back. And she needed to use the restroom, she went to the restroom. Lo and behold, my brother was waving her hand at her when she went to the restroom. And so they, they took her quickly to surgery, he was born prematurely. And of course, back then, they didn't have neonatal care units. They didn't have anything to take care of little children like that, like they do today. And back then, also, the fathers went to a special room called the Father's Waiting Room. There was none of this going into the birthing room and all of that. My dad tells the story, or told the story, that he got down on his knees and told the Lord, Lord, if you'll save my wife. I'm sorry. And my baby, I will serve you the rest of my life. And make sure my family serves you and goes to the church. And he kept me working. All the way back to as long as I can remember, my father made sure we went to church and knew about the Lord. So I grew up in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, went to church all my life. When I was a late teen, early twenties, I sang a couple different gospel quartets. We traveled around, sang gospel music. 
And uh, I worked in a secular job and eventually decided I wanted to go to college. Went to college and wound up filling the call to ministry, went, went on to seminary. I preached for 10 to 12 years after that. Then I went into secular work and uh, worked for Time Warner Cable, now Spectrum Cable, for over 20 years. And uh, retired from, from secular work and once again felt that call back into ministry. Something needs to be said about what's going on in our world today. It's just not a good thing. So uh, I was going to a United Methodist Church in Porter and when all this stuff started with the United Methodist Church, and you know what I'm talking about. I went with the Global Church, and that's why I'm here with you today, and I'm so glad to be here with you. So reading today, I, I left my reading glasses in the truck, but I think I can read this little print. This first passage comes from Isaiah 7, the one that I read during the children's sermon. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Reading again from Matthew chapter 1 verses 22 and 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and then will call him Emmanuel. Which means God with us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, Emmanuel, God with us. That is the title of my message this morning. God promised to the children of Israel a Messiah. A savior. And he was to be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a Hebrew name, which means God with us. You know, there, there is most of the time a meaning to most of you. Maybe you know what the meaning of your name is. I do mine. Frank means free or sometimes a free man. And I think I live up to that. I'm a free man. Live in a free country. And I hope it stays that way. Today in this message, we want to answer three questions. Who is God to us? How was God with us? And how is God in us? God to us. In, in the Old Testament, God was special to the children of Israel. He was the eternal creator. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without life, was void. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that this was good. Most Israelites in the day recognized God as the creator. God as the one that they served. Who is God? He's the Alpha and Omega. 
the beginning and the end. The Prince of Peace, the Almighty Father, the Lily of the Valley. God is our creator as well as the children of Israel. Non-believers today are trying to remove God completely. I'm thankful that our currency still says in God we trust. You go into a lot of government buildings today, in God we trust. I was in a courtroom recently to hear a case for a friend of mine, and up above the area where the judge sat, it said those words, in God we trust. But there are people today that are trying to take away who God is. Trying to take away God from our, our lives. Giving us a story that there is no God. That he does not exist. That he does not intervene in the lives of men. Does not become a part of men's lives. There is no God according to those non-believers. But I'm here to tell you today, God is real, God is alive, and He will be a part of our lives if we only allow Him to. Now, I guess I should have told you earlier, I'm not a quiet preacher. I have a tendency to get loud at times. When I was at Time Warner Cable, I was in a meeting one time, and they were attempting to do something that I thought was wrong. And I pounded the table and I said, look, we cannot do this. This is wrong. And afterwards, my manager came to me and said, what were you pounding on the table for? I said, I used to be a preacher. What do you expect me to do? Sometimes I pound on the pulpit. All in, in the, I'm not mad, all in the effort to make my point. <clears throat> Who is God to us? He is our creator. He's the one that made man from the dust of the earth and gave him a woman. And talking today about the way our world is headed, not believing in God. Yes, it's true. There are males and females. If you're born with male parts, you're a male. If you're born with female parts, you're a female. And I'm not a fan of, well, you're a little boy, but maybe inside you're a little girl. Wrong. God makes no mistakes. He makes no errors. If you were born a boy, you're a boy. If you were born a girl, you're a girl. And that's the end of that story as far as I'm concerned. So that is what God should be to us, our creator. Next, we look at God with us. That's the story of Jesus. He was Emmanuel, which means God with with us. Jesus was the fulfillment of scripture as promised. Can you imagine 600 years before Jesus, more than 600 years actually before Jesus' birth, the prophet Isaiah <coughs> predicted that a virgin should conceive and bear a child and they will call his name Emmanuel. Which means God with us. Even though Jesus came into this world, he was rejected by Jews and many non-believers. The, the wise men came following the star from the east. 
brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The reason that we celebrate Christmas the way we do by the giving of gifts to represent the giving of the gifts to Jesus. The shepherds came and gave glory to God when they had work to do out of the field, tending the flocks. They left the flocks and came and worshiped Jesus. He was God with us. How was he God with us? Because he lived his life perfectly, sinless, something that you and I cannot do. He gave his life and shed his blood for our sins, the extreme sacrifice that causes us to be able to be free from the sin of this world. I'm here to tell you today, Jesus was born over 2,000 years ago, God with us. He is still with us today. We still have salvation afforded to us because God is with us. He gave his life for us. He saved us. Finally, we look at that question, who is God in us? Jesus promised the Holy Spirit when he ascended into heaven. They were afraid that Jesus was leaving. His disciples were afraid. His followers were afraid that he was leaving and he would be gone. But Jesus said for them not to fear because the Holy Spirit would come and endow them with power. If you are born again today, if you are a Christian, if you have experienced salvation through Jesus Christ, then we have God in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Just because we're saved does not mean we are free from sin. The Apostle Paul talked about sin. And he said, I die daily, which means he died to sin. He died from sin. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to help us fight against the sin that Satan is constantly bringing our way. The Bible says, if a man says he has no sin, he is a liar. And the truth is not in. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, we get convicted of that sin. And when we get convicted of that sin, we go to God and say, Lord, help me. I am sorry. I have sinned. Hopefully we come to the point where that happens less and less. But thanks be to God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have God in us through the Holy Spirit. I trust today that you have the Holy Spirit living within you, leading you, guiding you, convicting you, empowering you to be a witness to those who do not know Jesus. doesn't mean we're going to live a perfect life but we can tell people, look, Jesus has saved me. Jesus has taken my sin away. And he can take yours away too. God within us. So in conclusion this morning, we need to tell people who God is to us. We need to tell people he is God with us. As the scripture said, assuring us of salvation. And he can in fact be God in us, residing in us, enabling us 
to overcome sin, enabling us to tell others about who Jesus is. And now we will stand and sing the hymn of dedication, love.